Welcome to this video. Many colleagues asked me that how to obtain FACP or American College of Physicians Fellowship. So I decided to make this video where I will share the basic requirements of the American College of Physicians Fellowship and also my experience. How did I prepare the application and why I did? What's the value? Full disclosure, I do not have any financial relationship with SAP. I am sharing my experience and thoughts because this was the one of the very common questions I was asked by my colleagues. And I feel that, that I truly enjoyed uh, by obtaining the FACP and it was truly honorable. So that's why motivated me to share my perspective with you. So first question is why you should obtain FACP or ACP, American College of Physicians Fellowship? Because when you are utilizing this professional designation, FACP, that truly outstanding because it's giving the signal to your colleagues, to your supervisors, that you are more dedicated and you are motivated to achieve excellence. And that's why you were continuing all the scholarship activities. So you were able to obtain this fellowship. FSAP gives the symbol that you are already recognized by your peers because of your excellent work as well as a scholarship activities. And personally, I feel that when I use FACP, it truly differentiate me than my other colleagues who may not have that FACP yet. It doesn't mean that all the person who have FACP, they are like super smart, nothing like that at all. This is one of the professional designation. It's help you to stand out. So a couple of basic requirements you need to have to obtain SAP fellowship. First, you need to do the uh, residency in the US. If you are doing the residency in the US, you need to have three years passed from that residency training. That means if you did the residency training either in internal medicine or neurology in 2018, after three years, you will be eligible to apply for this fellowship. You must have um, the active license of medicine in the US if you are practicing in the US. And you must be currently practicing. It could be in the office setting like primary care physician or it could be in the hospital setting. SAP also um, document their criteria that the fellow in order to get the fellowship, the membership need to be current. So your dues need to be clear. And so these are the all the basic requirements. So here is a one important point. For example, if you are applying as an international member, um, please go through the website because as I'm practicing currently in the US, I'm sharing with you all the perspective and experience for the physicians who are currently practicing and licensed in the US. So then after you have all these basic requirements, you also need to have one of the professional requirements. This professional, it could be like, you need to have some publications. It does not have to be you know, very reputed journal. If you have, that's awesome. However, if you do not, if you have some like case reports, uh, some um, like, you know, letter to the, um, editor, some correspondence, or some online publication that you can definitely highlight. You can also mention teaching. And teaching does not have to be always through medical school, because I know that many of our colleagues who may be practicing as outpatient, and they may not be directly affiliated with medical school in the US, which is completely understandable. So for those colleagues, um, you can, you know, if you are teaching medical students, residents, or our advanced practice providers, colleagues in your office, that also count as your teaching. 
And then other scholarly activity you can do, you can do some abstract or you can serve as faculty or mentor with medical students to publish the abstract or poster creation. Then another point you can also document is that like volunteerism and volunteerism does not have to be always like medical volunteerism. That is one part of volunteerism. If you are volunteering at your local mosque, temple or church, that you can also include. Then another part is like, you know, committee work. So if you are in a university hospital, you know that there are a lot of committee that you can easily get, you know, involved and improve your skill as well as document in your CV for this fellowship application. If you are in a community hospital, there are a lot of community, there are a lot of committee, lot of opportunities to get involved with your hospital leadership. So take those opportunity and either one or two committee, um, if you are involved, that will also come toward the positive remark of your fellowship application. So I started to prepare my um, application packet um, one month before the deadline. So please go to the SAP website and you will see that they have five times a year, they have the election. That means before that, you need to submit your application and then they will review your materials. And that happened five times in a year. So two other things you need, that is a sponsorship letter or in other words, the letter of support from two fellows or master of American College of Physicians. I should say, um, you know, master of ACP is like very limited. So you can ask any fellow, they will be, hopefully they will be happy to write the letter of support or a sponsorship letter for you. What I did when I was looking for the sponsorship letter, I reached out to my networks, to my colleague, to my bosses, and they gave me the letter. If you do not have, or if you do not know two fellows or masters, you can always you know, reach out to your local SAP governor, or you can email at FACP, um, that email, you will find it at SAP website that is truly dedicated for all the FACP related questions. So I hope you will find this video helpful and it will answer your questions that why, how, and when you should apply for American College of Physicians Fellowship. Again, I do not have any financial relationship with SAP because of this commonly asked question. I thought that I will share my experience and perspective with you. Hopefully it will be useful for you. If you are new to this channel, Thank you so much for visiting. Please subscribe to this channel, share this video with your friends and colleagues. I will see you in the next video. Until then, take care.